Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Tech. I'm Steve, and today we're going to be taking a specific special look at the Sony PVM1350. And also, this PVM that you're seeing now behind me will be for sale listed in an eBay auction. There will be a link to that below, and I will also have more details at the end of this video about that sale and uh, details on how all that will basically go. But to start the video, I wanted to go through this, uh, the details on this Sony PVM so that you would know the differences between this 1350 and other Sony PVMs that you may see that are similar to this, but not quite the same. Again, this is a 14 inch Sony PVM. It does match the same format as many other Sony PVMs from this time period, which is the mid to late 90s. You notice we have a lot of adjustment knobs to make our adjustments on the fly. We also have the ability to uh, use this menu button and open up our regular menu and then a sub menu. That way we can make adjustments to things like geometry and other important settings inside the PVM. And that's a big step in the technology for these monitors. Prior to this, you'd have to go and take the shell off and make a lot of those geometry adjustments internally with potentiometers. And it was just a lot more dangerous and a lot more hassle than on a monitor like this. So that's a big plus for this and really any other PVM that happens to have a, a sub-menu. Um, but again, everything else you'll notice on this looks very similar as far as the build-out does. It has the standard handles on the side. And then this particular monitor was made in July of 1996 again by Sony in Japan and it's just a really high quality unit uh, for using for CRT and we are going to look here at our inputs first we've got two lines that have composite ins and they also have outs so you can loop your analog video in and then out to another device or monitor from this output on here if you just use either a BNC cable or adapter and same thing with line B is the same in and out for composites. You also have mono audio on this monitor, which is common. And then you have your S-video in and out. So you can get S-video in and out of this monitor. But down here towards the bottom is where I have RGB plugged in. So this monitor does support RGB and RGB sync. And uh, it does a great job at that. It also has a mono audio speaker on board. And there is no outputs on this monitor for RGB, so you will not be able to daisy chain your video signal out. However, if you do have either 240p or 480i video analog signal in RGBS form, uh, you will have very little trouble getting it to sync up to this. You don't have to have a certain type of sync or anything. Now, I have personally calibrated this monitor, I've also replaced the capacitors on the geometry board, which is uh, something I always recommend if you get one of these monitors. Either try to have somebody to do it or get in there and replace the capacitors yourself. There are kits available. I have a kit available. You're about $30 for kits, a little bit less sometimes, depending on your monitor. But that way, you won't have any trouble getting in there and making your adjustments uh, using your submenu. You just need to get a good copy of the 240p test suite and that way you can make the adjustments and again try to make this a little bit over scanned uh, the manual actually recommends about a seven percent over scan for your picture and that's just going to give you uh, less of a gap uh, over here between the actual screen and then your bezel so you want to get that tube picture in use a hundred percent but you have to over scan it just a little bit that way you won't have any of those crooked lines along the edges here and you can uh, get the geometry set very well on. It's very easy to set geometry on a monitor with the submenu and that uh, is 14 inches, especially these Trinitrons. They do, once you replace the capacitors, you could get the geometry dialed in very nicely. It just takes a little time and patience, but uh, with the new capacitors and set, you'll be good to go for another 20 years. So that uh, picture does look very nice. It has 200 and, uh, well, this is 240p, but it has 450 TV lines, excuse me, on this tube. 
there are other monitors that will have 600 TV lines, 750, 800, and up. And to be completely honest with you, I have done a lot of comparisons of this 450 TV line picture right next to a 600 line monitor, and I can't see any bit of difference. And, and it's very hard to notice even the 800 line difference. So you'll only notice a big difference on the picture quality, I feel, once you get over that 800 line into those higher end PVMs and BVMs that are up to 1,000 and higher. But you can get a great scan line picture uh, right there. You'll see you get great, nice scan lines here. Once you get close, you'll notice them. And it's very uh, sharp image. There's, again, no latency with any of these monitors. So those are just some great uh, notes about the performance. This particular monitor will only support 240p and 480i, so there's no higher resolution uh, support for this monitor. You can only get those two analog video formats to uh, work on this. And then maybe some of the other drawbacks you'd like to note are this 1350 was actually designed only for the United States, so it is an NTSC only model, which is a little different because a lot of these are made to go in other regions and to be able to use like PAL, for instance, or even CCAM and other uh, video formats that aren't standard to North America. But this monitor actually is just straight North American NTSC, and it only accepts 120 volts through the AC plug. So those are two important things to note. And you also look at the inputs, and it does not say component on there anywhere because it does not support component video. This particular PVM was only for RGB. So I recommend if you have a consumer set or if you're concerned with component video, get a nice consumer set that way the, uh, with component video on it. That way you have the best of both instances uh, where you can actually use the RGB monitor for RGB, and then if you have component and you're worried about playing component, you could use that on a consumer CRT easily because you're pretty much getting one of these PVMs most likely for the RGB support. Uh, but this does have a great picture, and I definitely recommend it. It's very simple to use. Once you get it set, there's only four different input buttons on it, so it's just you're switching between, you just press those four buttons. And uh, you'll also notice there's a degaussing button. So you don't, you know, it's not a very busy button area. There is a one blue only button, but this is a pretty minimal button layout. So it's, it's again, fairly easy to operate, yet you could still get in there. And between that and the adjustment knobs, make any adjustment that you would need to um, on the fly or pretty easily. Uh, and it does use a lot of the same parts as the 1353, the 1354, the 1351, and even the 1453. So these are all pretty much the similar same Sonys. So um, I pretty much think that's about all there is to know specifically about this monitor. Maybe one more thing is that it does only support one single color um, temperature, which is 6,500 and or 6,500K. And that is just one. Some of the other monitors support as many as three or four. So you are just limited to that one color uh, profile. But that's not really a big issue either if you're just someone who's getting into uh, RGBs for monitors for the first time, maybe, and you're really looking into a Sony and you come across 1350, don't be scared off by that. Um, but that's pretty much, again, all the major differences between this one and others. You might have additional inputs and outputs or different inputs and outputs on other monitors, but this was kind of an entry-level, uh, lower-cost monitor at the time compared to the 600-line high-res Trinitrons that they were selling, um, you know, kind of like a higher-end model with a little bit more features and a little bit more uh, technical kind of power built into them. So that's going to be it for the technical profile. As far as the sale is concerned, I will be selling this monitor through eBay. The listing is below and it is a 10 day auction. Uh, just some quick details here. Pickup and delivery are available. Del uh, 
Now, I should let you know that the only people that can bid on this particular eBay listing are people that are located within the United States. They have to be within the continental United States. So I'm sorry if you're outside of that area. I can't uh, ship to that area through eBay right now as far as like making sure it would be insured. So if you're, if you're in those 48 states and you're interested, you can click the link below for a lot of details. Again, it's fully recapped, fully cleaned, fully calibrated. Uh, there are videos that I've done where I've shown how I've repaired this particular PVM. It was the one that had the damaged bezel. And then we have a new bezel put on there. So it's really been thoroughly cleaned and uh, just works wonderfully. Uh, fully tested. And the delivery, um, again, if you need delivery, that is available. It's between $60 and $80, depending on how far you are away from uh, Middle Tennessee or Nashville, Tennessee area. And that will be done through FedEx. So um, if you have any questions about that, please let me know through the eBay listing. But um, I think it's a good chance for somebody to get a great monitor. I just don't have the space for it. And none of my patrons right now uh, are interested in it, really. So I figured if, you know, I'd try to just throw it out there to give it a good deal to somebody and um, ho hopefully find a good place for it to wind up and live out a long uh, P PVM life. So uh, that's pretty much the majority of the information, again, on the Sony 1350 and how it compares to other monitors and uh, the information, again, through that eBay uh, listing. So if you're interested, if you've been looking for a monitor for a while and you're trying to get a good deal and you're wanting a 14-inch, I think this is a great opportunity uh, for you to get one. And um, it's most of the time these come available, they're not usually serviced. So just take that into mind. And um, I appreciate everybody for watching the video. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will come out with more CRT and PVM style profile videos where I'll go through kind of the specifics and the details of each uh, monitor and CRT or television uh, as it pertains to you know how it performs. But that'll be it for today's video. I'm Steve. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with some more retro content.